Prisoner Melbourne, Prisoner Melbourne, come to the control room. Uh, my name is Maximilian. I'm from Darwin. I, uh, I was working in, at my father's law firm. I had a good life. You know, it was it was every, anything that and everything in terms of opportunities that a, that a young man could want. I've never been able to really work it out why I'd been so happy, and then in this this period of 12 months, you know, found myself uh, just angry all the time and always on on the gear. And I, I clocked up this this. Crazy drug debt with a bunch of these these you know these people and um, and being you know off my head thought that it'd be an easy fix to to pull a, uh, a robbery to uh, pay my debts. Attention, now block, stand by for unlock. Standing at the rear cells, fully dressed, hands by your sides. Stand by for unlock. In the morning and the sky's on fire Hot sun burning on the razor wire Head in your hands, feet on the floor Waiting for the rattle of the key in the door Waking up in Berrima Waking up in Berrima Eight o'clock and the count is made a boss come handing out the razor blade Shave and a shower and a shirt tucked in Gotta do it right or you do it again Waking up in Verima So much tension in the atmosphere Keep on waiting for the fog to clear How the fucking hell did I After the robbery, I'm sitting in, on remand, you know what I mean? I'm facing, a, I'm facing a lengthy jail term. And I remember trying to justify these kinds of actions to my mother. And I remember saying to her, you know, at least in the robbery, mum, I didn't hurt anybody, you know. At least I didn't hurt anybody. That was, that was my justification for, for taking something that didn't belong to me. And I remember her looking at me, you know, with these, with these big brown eyes filling with tears, and she says to me, you know, son, you know, you hurt everybody. You know, can't you see that? You know, you hurt the people that love you the most. Doing 20 laps in a pool of sweat. I do another 10 for a cigarette. Every other brother is a world away. Look around for anything to feel this day. Waking up in Verima. Shoulder in the master line Head down low to hide your shame Speak up once when they call your name Ticking off the calendar, doing it hard And never let yourself get caught off guard Start off scared and you end up scarred Anybody could wind up in a place like this It just, uh, it's, it's just all about timing Life's all about timing, it's all about circumstance, it's all about choices, and uh, being in prison for years is, is a hard thing. But, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what else to say apart from that. Lockdown comes and the lights go out, and then you can't help what you think about. And just another number in the prison machine Any bet tomorrow is the same routine Waking up Waking in Berrima Waking up Waking in Berrima
once you get in this place, you get a record, you got a criminal record, it's hard to get a job back on the streets, you know? These young fellas, once they get a record, that's it, you know? They're gone. They're fucked. And you got all the ice and stuff out there that's ruining all these young fellas, you know? They can stay away from all that drugs and play footy and play sports, you know? You go boxing if you've got a bit of violence in you, go do boxing or something, you know? There's young fellas in here doing 12 years, 10 years, you know, for violent things, you know, and they're talented young fellas, you know, they could be footy stars or they could be out there rapping their music and that, you know. They're just throwing their lives away. This is my home, you know? When I get out, I fucking miss this dirty place, you know? People hate this place, but I'm completely opposite. I fucking miss this place. And I know when I'm in here, I'm straight. I got my health back, I'm fucking, I'm alive, I feel alive, you know? When I'm out in the streets running around fucking mixed up in crime, to feeling the drug out of it, it's just fucked. If I see an old mate that's been using and He'll ask me, you want to come for a taste? I know once I have that first shot, I'm fucked. Just non-stop. I'll go get in too deep. The only place that saved me is this Baron my Hilton. Yeah. It's a stressful world out there. There's work, family and a busy social schedule. It can be hard to find the time to relax, but when you simply have to get away from it all, I know just the place. Nestled in the outskirts of Darwin, this tropical retreat will offer you all the time for reflection you could possibly desire. Welcome to the Barrymore Hilton. First time at the Barrymore Hilton, prepared to be amazed. Checking in is all too easy. There's a round the clock reception and our friendly staff are ready to cater to your every needs. Our stylish yet cosy guest rooms are equipped with all modern conveniences, including a personal ensuite. And with the comfort of a 24 hour security and a 100% smoke free environment, you can rest easy at the Barrymore Hilton. Leaving all of your cares behind at the Barrymore Hilton. And you never know who you'll find. You know, fuck. My old man, he was a brutal fucking old bloke when he was around. But then the day, you know, he passed away, the day we buried me, old man, I went and had a shot. Had a shot of heroin. Fucking haven't stopped since. I don't know, I think the shock of fucking the old man, not, you know, because we made up, me and the old man, you know, even though he was a crazy bloke in his day, we made up. And I think it was just a shock. I don't know, missing him, I suppose. Yes, yeah, so I turned to the drugs. I shouldn't have had that shot that day, you know? 35 years old. Fuck. I should have just went and had a beer and, and a bomb. Ever since that day, it's just, fuck, it's me in hell. But the Barrymore Hilton isn't just a hideaway. You'll have time to socialise with fellow guests from all walks of life. There's a state-of-the-art fitness centre. And a host of recreational facilities. Or you can just lie back and soak up the unique atmosphere. Take it from your uncle Shibsy. I know it's my home away from home, and I'll personally guarantee you'll find it hard to leave. 
Born out in the bush, that's where I belong. Learning all the stories to keep my culture strong. Living by the law, living for the land. Not this white man system, I'll never understand. They chuck me in the soul, they try to make me climb. I'm not doing nothing but the white man's time. I was a man, I'm 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 Kalungan mereka mengira tu ni biar mana, pemerintah mana asal pun ada, pemerintah mana asal tu pun ada. Biar mana kan ini kamu kata kamu cinga berdua, wow, dah pengujung, dah kau bodoh ya, ngau, kanya kuda, kamu nak dah, dah, biar ada mana lagi. Hide away in here, lose your self-respect. Some correction center, nothing here correct. Punam ni kuda ngadawie, kalu pumam ngatanila. Ngai ka ngai feide, ngadam dagaio. But the white man's time. No, I'm not doing nothing. But the white man's time.
you know, in almost every block, you've got, you know, certain areas of that block that are not controlled, but just, to, you know, the hangouts for the, the different tribal groups, which is it's very funny to see, because when I first came to prison, it just looked quite chaotic to me, you know. I didn't understand the, you know, the social implications of the tribal systems in prison. Having an Aboriginal mother and a, a white father was uh, was it was a funny thing growing up. You know, it's a small thing that that always left a you know everlasting impression on me that I wouldn't be properly accepted by my tribe from Lajimano, the Walpuri mob, the Yapa mob, because of my skin colour. And I didn't want to be accepted by this mainstream white society, conservative outlook kind of people from Victoria because I just didn't think that they, I could associate with them. I didn't believe that I felt connected to them, you know, in a way that an Aboriginal person feels connected to each other. It was hard for me because uh, being, being light skinned, I felt like when I went to school, I was classed as a, a black fella, an Aboriginal. But when I went to the community, I was, some of the younger kids might have seen me as a, looked at me like I was a white fella or an outsider. You well, nye nye bra, in the mula jok. You are all my yapa people. Yo, tuk karanga, tuk karanga. This is for all the outcasts who feel out of place from the rest of the race. Black, white, either or. Living in the middle is a tug of war. Here, there, brown, fair. Living in the middle is a cross to bear. So I was stressing that this mirror's reflection wasn't a blessing. I only had one question, what's wrong with this complexion? I was forgetting to open my eyes and see that smile wasn't black or white. It's a little in the middle, but I stayed outside and fried just to try and blacken this heart. Cause no pride was filling my mind with doubt. So I'ma tell you all what this yellow fella yell about. Black, white, either or. Living in the middle is a tug of war. I tried ringing. Aboriginal hostel there in Melbourne to find, see if they had a room there. And after I told her who I was and where I was from, she told me that she's my auntie and my father's been looking for me for years. And turns out I look just like him and talk like him. At least it wasn't too awkward in that sense. I sort of learned a bit more about myself, who I was, where I came from. You know, they're like me, so when I was with them, that's where I belong. The only other place I feel like I belong is in prison. Hard to survive when you're repping the brown pride. Two sides of black and whites. And ain't for playing both or neither. I'm sitting on the fence. You're the Wamba clans from a fucking feet up. Mixed teams and pipe dreams sent me off beam and into the trap where you can never relax. So wherever I'm at, every day I stay. Half at home, the other half cast away. Black, white, either or. Living in the middle is a tug of war. Here, there, brown, fair. Living in the middle is a cross to bear. Between about 13 to about 16, you go through men's business. I never finished it. I began it, but um, there, were, there were aspects to traditional law that I just couldn't agree with. and. Um, I wasn't prepared to go through with. Um, so I ended up leaving, you know, I've never spoken about this actually, but um, I ended up leaving through it and that that was cause for a lot of, you know, I suppose dis dishonour in, in a lot of ways, you know, dishonouring my tribe. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's been difficult, you know, not being able to totally be accepted by one half of your family. So what's the use when the truth's so hard to bear? Then I bust a verse to curse the system while I'm here. Reminiscent the blessings of a youth who used to have a future. Cause I say truth to 
They do what I wanna do, attitude They got me in the prison suit So can you see who's really free? Is it you or is it me? But I can't escape the fact that I'm branded I'll never understand it I guess I'll make the best of the cards that I was handed That I was handed Black, white, either or Living in the middle is a tug of war Here, there, brown, fair Living in the middle is a cross to bear I don't know why I drink. Probably drink to have fun, you know, just to get away from this this life where I got sober life. I don't want to be a different person, you know. Sober life is probably like a bit boring, you know. I'm just more relaxed and you know, cruise along, but you know, it puts you in into a different place in probably another world where you're not worried about anything and you're doing your own thing, you know, you're happy all the time when you're drunk. Sometimes you, uh, most of the time you get into a fight, but you don't even worry about the fight most of the time. You don't even know what's going on, you know? You know what's going on, but you just don't care about it much, you know? I get more courage when I'm drunk, you know? I can go with probably more girls than for I would probably go with when I'm sober, because I wouldn't have the courage to go up to and talk to them. And the girls, definitely, when they drink, they want, they want the attention too, you know? They need the attention, because girls, they can't live without the attention. That's why they wear tight clothes and stuff, so people can stare at them, you know? Well, most of the time, anyway. I wouldn't say I'm a ladies, man. I just probably, you know, good here and there, you know? But I prefer a lot of, you know, girls anyway. To be in my life, I probably had five, six wives, you know. I'd love to have five, six wives. I wanna tell you about my precious love, about the sweetheart I've been dreaming of, a special someone always there for me, a very pretty kind of company. She got a booty I can celebrate. The kind of body I appreciate And when I hold her in the firelight She helped me make it through the night I'm talking about alcohol I never had a chance at all You had me from the start You poured into my heart And brighten up my day Hey, 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 alcohol The devil in disguise and I can't get away. I like drinking because like I just wanna celebrate too, you know. That's that's another thing, you know, and um you know, just to make me feel good too. You can't stay at home, you know, it's boring all the time, you know, and there's nothing else to do back home, you know, and you know, like leave our stress, you know. And like, like, just want to hang out with some friends, you know, and just to go out discoing and dancing around, you know, and walking around looking for men, you know. Just, you know, just want to sleep with a man for a night. <laughs> now let me tell you about a sweet romance. The kind of lover who can make me dance. He get me dizzy with a magic kiss. Intoxicated with the taste of bliss It's like I'm walking in a happy clown They make a party out of every crown He got me crazy and he make me shun You know you really knocked me out Talking about alcohol 
Because you, you know, put me in the jail first time, and then get me into a lot of trouble, and then the family don't want you to hang around with them. If you have a girlfriend, your girlfriend won't hang around you that much because you're drunk all the time. You want to get more group. Yeah, I think that's probably why. Probably why I don't like it, but I like it in a in a good way. Straight, I think I'm wasted. Wasted. I drunk a flood of that monkey blood, and I'm blind. Blind. I'm in a mess, laying with my silver princess, feeling like a whole world has left us behind. Tell you about the morning sun. It's pointing at me like a loaded gun. I can't remember what I did and said. Got a hammer banging in my head. I guess my lover left me high and dry. But there are others who can testify to all the trouble that we got into and what my baby made me do. jealous of me a lot, you know, and I, could, I couldn't stand it, you know, like, I got locked up one night because being drunk, you know, because I was intoxicated. They would let me out about four o'clock in the morning. So I was walking down, you know, looking around for him. He, he was still drunk at, at that time. And he took me to the um, Catherine River and started beating me up there for no reason, you know, bashing me, bashing me, you know, hitting me a lot when I I put, you know, like, I was hungry and perishing for water at the same time, you know. And, like, he was still hitting me with a stick, and he just pushed me over to, in, in that Catherine River, and, you know, like, Catherine River have, you know, salt water, crocodile island there, you know. Pushed me in there, and that water was really dark. My arm was, um, like, already sore, you know, because he was whacking me all over my two side arm, you know. And I couldn't, you know. I couldn't hardly swim, so I was paddling with my foot, you know, right up to the bank side, and he was there with a big rock, you know. He started whacking me again, you know. And I told him that I'm perishing for water and still whacking me, you know, and, you know. Coppers came and um, they sent me to Darwin Hospital for x rays, so they, they found out that I had two broken arms, you know. First time I ever saw anything violent was not long after my mum uh, got with my stepfather. He he got real sick. He developed schizophrenia, and one day he, while well, my mother was pregnant to him, um, 
He uh, locked us in a room and nearly beat my mother within an inch of my within an inch of her life. I would have been about seven, seven or eight at the time. Never seen anyone hit anyone before. When you were a baby and the world was sweet, loving arms around you in the country heat. Everyone was family and heaven you were in. You couldn't see the bruises on her shiny skin. Didn't understand it, it took your time to learn how quick a kiss becomes a fist and tempers turn. Didn't hear about it in the stories of the clan. But you know what it takes to be a full-grown man. When you get emotional, this is what you do. Scream and shout and take it out on someone close to you. Maybe you'll feel better making someone else feel bad. That's what you learn from your mom and dad. I guess that's what comes out when I, when I drink. The memories, the anger that I hold comes out. And I saw a lot of that with other families too, the domestic violence. And um, people get speared, and people get slashed with swords, knives, clubs. Yeah. Every kid is happy playing hide and seek, especially when your father gets drunk to speak. Pick a boo if he sees you, fun big games. We'll play this game forever now, cause no one wins. We'll hide it from the neighbors, hide it from the town. You have to learn to raise your guard, never let it down. Cause if you cop a hiding, from a family adult. It's no one else's business. And, and it's, it's all, all your fault. So don't you get hysterical. You can't see the plan. They only try to grow you up as quickly as they can. They wouldn't have to hit you if you weren't so bad. That's what you learned from, from your, your mom and dad. dad. My stepfather came to this, this prison that I'm in now, and he, he was fine for a while. We came and visited him, and he seemed to be doing all right. And um, one day we got a phone call, and found, they found him. He'd, he'd committed suicide in his cell. When you get emotional, this, this is, is what, what you do. do. Scream and shout and take it out on, on someone, someone close to you. you. And they can ask what kind of bloody chance they had. Fucking chance they had. With the lessons that they learned from mom and dad. From the lessons that you learn from your mom and dad. From mom and dad. From mom and dad.
my dad, he sort of, he, he was there, but he left. He left us, or me and my little sister, in the care of our mother. Mum, my mum, being an alcoholic, sort of let go of life. At the age of five, um, I found myself on the streets, fending for myself, breaking into houses and shops at that stage too, um, trying to find ways to feed myself because I had no one there to provide for me. Around about five years old, I remember seeing another child die in front of my eyes. And I was actually blamed for it. There was a whole heap of kids in the swimming pool. And there was a, there was a few older, older kids there that were sort of being rough with the younger ones. And I felt this body bump up against me. I come up and I look and I see this kid floating on top of the water. I actually thought he was mucking around, just floating. I try to tap him, like, hey, what's going on? There's no response. Curse the rains, cause my pain runs deep as the tears drop from my eyes. Once again, I didn't wanna face the truth that you try to got me through my dark ways. You had love for me, even though you knew a black heart only brings rain. Staying by my side, all the promises and lies that I'm gonna change in the end. I stayed the same, I guess I'm cursed, cause I don't know how to love. Chasing broken dreams, getting high every day with every step, I start to lose faith. Trying to keep a pleasant place deep in my heart, but everything falls apart. When the pain's in the dark, all my hopes have failed Trying to be a better man, deep inside I'm in hell Please forgive me for this dirt that I did Will I have bread in my dreams or is this burden carried till the end of time? I will never know as my lonely life goes on I'm singing Hail Mary's all the red roses never bring you back I will never know as my lonely life goes on All the known to a broken dream Singing Hail Mary's all the red roses never bring you back I was heavy into the drugs. I was taking speed, methamphetamine, drinking a lot of alcohol, smoking a lot of dope, just being elated by substance. Everything was just all negative. Everything was just about me and what I wanted. And in any way that I could get what I wanted, by any means, was my attitude. And I heard a lot of people along the way. I'm actually here for the death of my girlfriend. And this is something that I have to live with for the rest of my life. Miss when you used to whisper in my ears that you cared it would wash away all my pain. Now I struggle with the stress that you're not here as I wipe away my tears. They say you only see heaven in your life after death. Believe there's a heaven if I only knew what I know now. Them that you love gave me, showed me heaven as I wait in vain for a sign. No one feels my pain as the rain thunders down. Wonder if I'll ever see your face in the end of time. Though I contemplate your love, what's the use of making love when I only cause the hurt? I can't seem to breathe cause this gift is killing me I know my family cares and they tell me that it's gonna be alright In the end it doesn't matter who cares I'm the one that suffers no hope inside, feeling of your vibe still beats deep inside As I hold on to a vision of your face, I'm all alone As I gaze in the mirror, see the demon shine for the very first time I'm singing Hail Mary's all the red roses can never bring you back Never bring you back I tried to suicide a few times The first time I 
I try to hang myself. I try to string myself up. And when I jumped, the rope snapped. I tried to take my life again. This time I grabbed a gun, I had a 22. I loaded it up and I put the barrel in my mouth and I pulled the trigger but misfired. I thought the firing mechanism was buggered. Pulled it out of my mouth, I walked outside and as soon as I pulled the trigger it went off. I don't know, I think there's someone there that actually that's helping me, that's trying to guide me in the right direction. It's hard to forgive myself for my actions, but I know that I can't move forward unless I do. Because I know that there are people out there that need me, just like everyone else. Everyone has a relevance to this world, an importance. I just don't see it. I will never know with my lonely life. Clothes on, holding on to a broken dream. Singing Hail Mary's all the red roses never bring you back. Can never bring you back. children by the age of 22 but I knew I would be a good mum. I knew that I would be a good wife. My husband at the time was diagnosed with multiple myeloma cancer. Um, two years later he passed away and I was now widowed at the age of 27. But I couldn't really understand why God allowed it to happen. And just the pain that I did experience and in the, in the, in the confusion of unanswered questions, I made a decision and I, I took a track and I, I sort of wandered around for a few years. Um, I drank a lot, sort of just indulging in anything and everything to sort of just subside the pain, forget about the good memories forget about responsibilities, try and block out the fact that I needed to do something to be able to move on. I had three children now to also think about and I just didn't know where to start, basically. So I just drowned myself in alcohol. involved in a little Filipino um, church in Manly in Sydney and through that it, it sort of you know began to just repair things within myself. I started community events and I targeted things on the young people's talents whether it was dancing whether it was singing whether it was playing an instrument. I started to make international contacts with um, other pastors and I got an invitation to actually, now at this time, go to Ghana, Africa. I came from Kenya to Bangkok, from Bangkok to Cambodia. 
traveled through Singapore, from Singapore into Darwin on the 23rd of May 2013. My bags had gone through scanning machines and inside the lining of the bags that had been given to me, they found drugs. I don't think I even said anything because when I look back at it now it was like I was right back in the place and what I had experienced many years ago of just not being able to understand and just trying to figure it out and trying to have answers for the questions that were being asked. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I went to trial maybe three to four weeks ago. Um, the jury found me guilty. up for what I did when I came in. But yeah, this is probably my last chance, you know? Because I did my full, if I did my full time, this, this probably would be my last chance because I wouldn't be breaking no parole and stuff, you know? You just gotta try on that straight road. Now I've been tested in suffering calm. I cling to the cliff top I'm dangling from. Darkness below me, I can't let it go. I hold on, cause deep down I know God has a reason, God has a plan, a destiny meant for each woman and man. I know. Biggest fear is, is getting out and uh, and just losing myself again. I hope that I can uh, I can be strong enough to say no to to uh, to my addiction. I hope I can I can uh, I can make my my father and my mother proud. I hope that I can make amends for all those that I've hurt. Uh, I hope I can be seen as a good person one day. And that's what I hope. start a family, do something for my people, but it's, it's hard, 
had to do that. So I need to be able to help myself before I can help others. At the moment, it's hard to see myself doing anything other than the same thing I was doing last time I was out. When I go home, I'm going to go walk out the gate. I'm going to close it behind me, and I'm going to tell him I'm not coming back. And I'm going to teach, and I'm going to tell all my nephew and my brothers and cousins and all my relations, no life in jail. There's no life in jail. Life's here in the bush. I have nowhere else to to go. Physically, I have no family here. I don't know anyone here. So all I have is just trusting in God. Even though I can't see his head, trusting in his heart that he has a plan, a bigger plan and a bigger purpose for me. And that whatever it is throughout my journey that I come to see it, I come to understand it. But Joseph was taken down low And trial and tribulation led him to salvation I don't want to think about anger or blame That's just a pathway to more of the same I think of my children Destiny.